Welcome to the Hundred Dollar MBA Show, and today is a Q and A weekend episode. If you got a question, we would love to answer it here on the Hundred Dollar MBA Show. That's what Q and A weekends is all about. You can submit your question using our email contact at one hundred MBA dot net, or you can use our speak it option. Record your question. We'll play right here on the show. You can check that out on our show page at one hundred one zero zero MBA dot net slash show. As always, I'm your host, your coach, your teacher, Omar Zenholm. I'm also the co-founder of The $100 MBA, a complete business training and community online. And today's question comes from Amanda. Amanda asks, how do I say no to a client that I love but is too cheap? Amanda, we've been there in our business. You have these great, lovely people that you enjoy their company and everything and you like working with them. But their budget is just below your range. You just can't do the job for that price. How do you decline their business in a professional way? How do you do that without making them feel bad because you obviously care for them? That's what we're going to talk about today by answering your question. I hope we can help you out and help everybody out that's listening. So let's get down to business. Today's episode of The $100 MBA Show is sponsored by one of my favorite podcasts, Freedom Fast Lane, The number one show if your goal is to have more freedom and more money in 2015. Open up iTunes right now, search Freedom Fast Lane, and hit subscribe. There are times in your business where you're going to have to gently let go some of your favorite clients. And that's natural. You're growing. You're getting better at what you do. So you're going to need to charge more. That's just natural, and that's what business is all about. You're worth more, so you charge more. But how do you let them down? How do you let them know that you can't work with them anymore with their low budget? This is a great question by Amanda, so I'm going to give it a stab, give it my best answer. And I want to refer to a book that I mentioned on the show a whole bunch of times, and I really highly recommend it for anybody who's in the services or in any business, actually, that's dealing with clients. And the book is Book Yourself Solid by Michael Port. And in the book, he has this concept called the red velvet rope policy. And the concept or the idea behind this policy is to have this practice of trimming your client list as you're growing as a business person. Because as you get better in your business, as your services get better, as your caliber of work gets better, you're going to need to spend less time on a lot of people. So what I mean is they're going to be spending more time on less people. So you'll have five clients that are paying you more than what 10 clients would pay you, but obviously you'll spend a little bit more time on each client with those five. So how do you let down somebody who is too cheap or maybe they just don't have the budget? Too cheap may sound a little bit offensive, but maybe their budget is just a little bit below the range that you can work with. Now, there's a couple of things you can do. One, you can just simply have an honest conversation with them. But when you're having this conversation with them, you got to make sure that you still serve them as a client. Let me give you an example. Back in the day when Nicole and I were in the services and I was doing a lot of web development work, building brands and building web platforms for people, their websites and everything that entails, I had a client that wanted to do a project that was way below a budget that I can accept because I know that I would spend a lot of time and if I took on this client, I would say no to other projects that would be worth more. So I had to tell her gently, I love your business idea. I love working with you. I think you're a fantastic person and we've worked before in the past. But at this point in my business, I can't take you on. I have a full schedule. I have other clients I have to serve and my rates have gone up. And currently the budget that you have for this project is outside that rate. And I usually pause after that and let them just absorb that because maybe they can increase their budget. Maybe they could say, well, oh, okay, how much money would it cost to do this project? And at that point, you can give them a counter offer and tell them this is what the project's going to cost. Sometimes they'll take it. Sometimes they'll say, okay, I can pay that. That's fine. I want to work with you. But oftentimes they will say, I can't. I can't pay that much. They may try to negotiate and pay a little bit more than their original price. But again, it still falls short to your rates. At this point, I continue the conversation and say, listen, I really want to help you. And I think this project is worth doing. And I often refer them to somebody that I know in my industry that can serve them at that price point. This is where networking really helps, where you go to conferences and meet other people. You find people that maybe were in your place a year ago that would love to have him or her for a client and say, this person, you know, they're not me. They're somebody else. You're working with somebody else, 
but I know them, I know their work, and they can serve you at this price point. Would you like me to make an introduction? And I offer to you know, do an email introduction where they get to know each other. Now, what this does is that you're still serving your client. You're referring them to somebody else. They're still getting their job done. It's not you. And what may happen is that they may get their project done. They may like it, and it was a good experience. But they may miss working with you or might feel the quality of your work might be a little bit a level above what they got with the other person. Maybe it's still great, but again, you're a bit different. Maybe they just like your style. And they'll remember that. And they'll remember the next time they have a project that they're going to have to pay a little bit more. Now they have a frame of reference. They have a comparison. They can't get that expertise that you offer at the price that they had. And they know now why there's a difference in price when it comes to your expertise and somebody else's. So still serve your clients by giving them a way to have their project done by somebody else, somebody that you trust, somebody that can do that at that budget. And stay in touch. Still serve them maybe with great materials or great content from your blog. Still let them know that you know you do appreciate their business from the past. And you may want to even follow up with them and say, hey, how did that project go? Did you get in contact with the reference that I gave you? They may have not even contacted them and said, hey, I really do want to work with you. I'm going to wait until I have the budget and I will sign that deal and work with you with that budget that you need. So don't just forget about them. Maintain that relationship and still serve them in the way you can. I got a little bit more about this topic, but before that, I got to give love to today's sponsor, Freedom Fastlane. As I mentioned at the start of today's episode, today's sponsor is one of our favorite podcasts, Freedom Fastlane. You've been listening to The $100 MBA Show, and now you're ready to start a business, or you want to take your business to the next level, or your life to the next level. This is one show that you should definitely subscribe to. My favorite episode is the one where he outlines how you can make and keep $2 million within two years. I also like the show where Ryan explains how to invest your profits for passive cash flow so that you're not exchanging time for money. You'll hear these episodes and more to grow your business on Freedom Fastlane. So open up iTunes, type in Freedom Fastlane, and hit subscribe. There's a principle that I've learned over the years when it comes to business, and that is you can never grow if you never say no. You have to say no to certain people so you can say yes to others. You want to say yes to more challenging tasks. You want to up your game and take more on projects that will be a little bit more lucrative for you. Part of growing in business is growing your revenue, right? But you can't say yes to everybody. You only have a limited amount of time in your day in the life cycle of your actual business. I mean, we're all on this earth for a certain amount of time, and we got to make sure that we use it the right way. So if we don't say no to certain people that may be not in the line with our growth, then we're not going to be able to say yes to those that are. And that's why I recommend in this question is to still serve them, still support them, still be in contact with them. That doesn't take too much time. That's not like taking on the whole project. Taking on the whole project is going to take a whole lot more time. Keep serving them because that's what you do, regardless if they buy or not. That's what we do. We keep serving our clients and our audience and help them out. But make sure you're seeking out more challenging opportunities, ones that can help you grow as an entrepreneur. Amanda, I hope that answers your question and I hope that helped everybody who's listening out there. We appreciate your listenership. I just want to take a minute to thank you all for being such wonderful listeners to the show. We just love the fact that you guys are listening every single day, seven days a week. You know, We are happy to be giving these episodes. As long as you keep listening, we'll keep making them. So thank you so much, guys, for all your support all the iTunes rating and reviews, all the downloads. You know, I was just checking the dashboard recently and we reached 2.4 million downloads since the launch in August. So thank you guys so much. That's all due to you, the audience of The $100 MBA Show. Guys, I want to leave you with this, this question about serving clients that maybe are not uh, in your range of price range, in your budget range, where you can actually serve them and it's worth your while in terms of business. Sometimes you're going to say no, obviously, like we talked about. But it's more than that. It's also about how much you value your time. When you're first getting started, you don't have the luxury of putting a high price tag on your time because you need to earn that price tag. You got to earn and put a few you know, projects under your belt and have something to show that you know, your time is worth something. But as you grow year after year, you're going to realize how much time is valuable to you and that you can't do everything and still be healthy. You know, we have to take time for our bodies, to take breaks, for our family, for our life, you know. 
to enjoy, you know, the, the fruits of our labor, too. You know, sometimes we just work, 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 and we forget about, you know, why are we working for? You know, yes, it's great to serve your audience and be able to create great work, but uh, you also have to, you know, uh, serve your body as well, make sure it rests well. So my point here is that as you start growing in your business, your time is going to start having different value, and that's going to be directly proportionate to how... 